Okay, I can't wait to dive into your five myths. So I, for the first one I wanna talk about just because it grabbed my attention. And every human being I've ever worked with, every leader within the organization, every HR representative, every change agent consultant is gonna say, quote, culture starts from the top, mm -hmm. end quote. And you say, that's a myth. Okay, why? Mm -hmm. that, was the, that was the one that I had uh, the most fun uh, working on and, and it's deeply, deeply pervasive in our, in our society to think that way. Um, so I'll, let me just begin by saying leaders, leaders do have something to do with culture. So as, so for your listeners, leaders and organizational practitioners, you know, leaders are not off the hook. Let's just start there. So, yeah. uh, so put everybody's minds at rest, right? <laughs> leaders have a lot. The leader that comes to me and says, I have, well, I have nothing to do with the culture. I'm going to slap him, him or her. So, um, they have a lot to do with culture, but it's not linear, it's not input output, and it's not directly causal. And there's very, there's virtually no research in anthropology that supports the claim that a leader, now I'm gonna go back uh, hundreds of thousands of years and think about a tribal leader actually setting the culture of that society. One of the interesting things about our field, Wanda, as you, as you know, is that consultants especially, we're very prone to this. We make up concepts, you know, we invent the concept of culture as if we were, we were the inventors of the idea. Like culture has been around in, in human societies for as long as there've been humans because humans create culture. It's an evolutionary adaptive response to survival. In fact, without culture, the argument goes, human societies wouldn't survive. Right. As reference, as knowledge, you know, how to, I'm just going to take it out of context, but you know, how does a, uh, a tribe in Papua New Guinea know which native plants are poisonous and which are not. How would you know that, right? You get taught that in some direct way? Likely not. You learn that as part of your reference system as a child growing up. Human, humans create culture or culture is part of our cognitive substrate or cognitive preconscious as a way to survive, as a way to make sense and survive. So when consultants invent the concept of culture, it's, it gets, uh, it's always humorous. So back to your question. I haven't lost track of the question. The, the, um, so if you think about culture as a reference system, you, the question really is how do leaders impact the reference system, right? And there's been a, a lot of thinking and, and a, lot of, a lot of evolution on this because leaders have something to do with culture, but the idea that it's comes from either their personalities or comes from the things that they say or the things that they do. Um, what we know is that it takes a lot more than just pronouncements or memos or um, walking the talk, so to speak, by leaders. Uh, it takes a lot more than that to change neuroplasticity of a collective, okay. a lot more. What's required is sustained and meaningful experience think about how you come to know anything really meaningful and important in your life, it's usually because it's been sustained, you've been doing it for a long time or a while, and it's, it's important to you. And so we confuse the, the idea of cultures, uh, uh, a, a leaders shaping culture, because often, especially in small companies, it's, it is the leaders or the founders that have the business strategy or the vision or the knowledge that makes the company successful. You know, the founder creates the company, they have the idea, the idea proves to be revolutionary, therefore, and that creates a, a kind of culture around that idea, and therefore you attribute it to the leader. Well, it's, it is attributable to the leader, but the leader didn't create the culture, the leader provided the idea that made the company successful. That was a meaningful experience for the collective working on that. On that. that is what creates the culture. The meaningful, sustained experience is how the reference system gets formed. And there's a lot of data well, to support that in the in the. I can see world. watching a number of entrepreneurial firms where you start with a green slate. So you know you yeah. could have evolved any kind of culture that you wanted to evolve, and even in large organizations. And I can see where if you think about the culture as the kind of experiences we've had with each other, there's the meaning of what we're trying to achieve as a company or as a group. That is a piece of what makes it work or not work. But then people interact with each other and learn ways of interacting with each other all the time. And right. the leaders can't touch every single one of those. So the company grows and gets more complicated yeah. and right, you know, beyond a certain, right, exactly. And often a lot of it is not intentional anyway. A few leaders will be quite intentional about some of those choices, but not all of them. 
And it can't, it can't just be down to the leaders. It has to be down to everybody else. So yeah. sustained, yeah. meaningful experience. So that tells me then why most culture change programs don't work. 